Hello, everyone. This is Brian Gilbert. I'm back from Walt Disney World uh, in one piece. Thank God. I uh, hope you guys have been okay since I've been, out, been, out, been gone. Uh, I look forward to uh, speaking with uh, health and fitness with you guys out there uh, some more. And we're back, everybody. Welcome to GoTerran TV today. It's Monday, June the 15th. And as you can see side by side, returning to GoTerran TV for his second follow up interview, Brian Gilbert. Brian, welcome back to GoTerran TV. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Tyron. How are you? Good. Thank you. Well, as all the people know out there, we had you on about approximately two months ago. You were here. We introduced you to all the folks out there watching and um, told them a little bit about yourself. And today's purpose was just to kind of follow up. Uh, as we mentioned last time, I wanted to get you back on here. Uh, first and foremost, I understand you just got back from vacation. Uh, can you tell everybody where you were at and uh, how long were you gone and how was your vacation time? Uh, been in Walt Disney World for, uh, well, been in Florida for a week. I uh, went to Walt Disney World uh, five of those seven days. Uh, very hot, lots of crowds, spent a lot of money. Uh, but having two daughters, uh, you know, Walt Disney World, you know, the home of the princesses and whatnot, they were in seventh heaven. So as long as they enjoyed it, I enjoyed it and it had a great time. Good to get away. Uh, good, you know, not to, you know, get up, not to have to be anywhere or anything like that. You know, what a vacation is supposed to be. So, uh, you know, it was good to get away, but I'm certainly glad to be back. I was getting a little bored, I have to say. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Well, it's great to have you back. Great to see you. And uh, speaking of seeing you, you know, as we were talking about before we started recording, your uh, new phone, that your, your picture quality looks so much better. What kind of phone do you have? It's actually, uh, I've never even heard of this brand before. The guy gave me such a good deal on it. It's called a ZTE Z-Max. Yeah. Um, oh. You know, uh, they, they recently just uh, started making these, and, um, you know, so far so good. No glitches, no anything. Big, huge, you know, 5.8-inch uh, screen. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. Everything faster like I got about a 14 uh, megahertz uh, and a quad core you know um, processor so I'm you know really just whipping around the net you know even if I'm not on Wi-Fi it's just no problem you know multiple apps up you know you know surf the internet do whatever you need to love this phone so far so good of course you could start acting crazy tomorrow and I could change my mind but for <laughs> right now a plus plus I'm glad to hear that uh, I've actually never heard of that phone either I remember you were showing it me that day is like something from the future I was thinking what is this yeah. so, but that is considered yeah. a smartphone I guess too isn't it oh yeah definitely a smartphone and, yeah. and matter of fact I'm seeing the person the screen it's like the second biggest screen in this house after the big screen in the living room so it's almost <laughs> like uh, you know I don't have to fight with my kids with TV anymore I got a screen just as big in my hand so I just go watch that in my own room you know so uh, <laughs> awesome. I love it I absolutely love this phone yeah that's good I'm glad uh, that's working out um, so, yeah, let's get back to uh, your kids, too, real quick, uh, Brian. Uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about them too much. Uh, you got two girls. What are their names? Uh, Brianna and Brielle. Uh, Brianna is eight. Brielle is five. Uh, Brianna will be going to third grade, and Brielle will be going to kindergarten this year. So we got oh. them both in school. Uh, they're on their way. That's exciting. Yeah, you got to be happy. Well, they're very cute. I've seen them at the Family Life Center, and everybody else at the Family Life Center has seen them. They know who I'm talking. They're just adorable. Yeah, you got two little princesses there. So, <laughs> so they think anyway. They think they are anyway. <laughs> well, Brian, um, how's your summer going so far, too? Oh, uh, well, outside of the, uh, you know, had a week full of amusement park food, but outside of that, it's been going pretty well. Yeah. Um, you know, kids are out of school. Uh, you know, I've had a lot of clients on vacation, so my schedule hadn't been quite as heavy as it was before. So, uh, you know, really had a chance to kind of really, you know, take this opportunity to really get caught up on my education, get some reading done, especially on vacation. Had lots and lots of fitness journals and magazines that I needed to catch up on reading. I was able to do that, and, uh, you know, it's, you know, so far so good. It's a little hot, but, uh, you oh. know, we got a pool right on the street, and I'm about to go jump in it as soon as we get done. Oh, that, that's awesome. Yeah, that'll be really nice. It's perfect, because you're right. It's not even officially summer yet, and, my God, it's scorching hot. Hot out there. What what kind of articles? What magazines and journals have you been uh, keeping up with? I just basically went to men's health. Uh, yeah. You know, I started out, you know, um, you know, kind of more as a meathead as a muscle head. So I'm still, you know, I read Flex magazine, sure. uh, Muscle and Fitness. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the whole gauntlet. I uh, read the. Um, I've actually read the Body for Life, the men's version, the book. Yeah. Uh, I got a big yeah. jump on the women's version. Uh, yeah. I actually got in the bathroom now. 
Uh, so really, you know, I had a chance. I, I really gotten behind, you know, being so busy with school and everything. But now I've really had a chance to start to get caught back up. And so learn a lot of, I would say learn a lot of new things, but kind of refresh myself on a lot of things that I'd already known. That's awesome. Uh, but tell us about the uh, education, the continuing education you're doing with the uh, studying. Uh, w what's that all about? Oh, with the continuing ed, more for, uh, you know, with my uh, certification with the NASM. Okay. Uh, every, every so many years, you have to do so many hours, uh, mm -hmm. you know, stay certified. And so I would take, you know, whether it would be a, you know, corrective exercise course yeah. uh, or whether that might be, you know, working with, you know, elderly population course. Uh, I had a number of those things that I've done in the past year and a half or so, mm -hmm. uh, especially on the corrective exercise end. Uh, I've done uh, probably about three or four courses on that in different places around Atlanta and the southeast. Yeah. But uh, really, really, really have uh, tried to stay abreast in that because it seems like, you know, if nothing else for myself, since I'm, you know, not a young chicken anymore, more and more things are starting to break down. More and more things aren't starting to quite work work properly. So, uh, you know, anytime I get a chance to do that, I definitely will sign up for one. I have another one, I think, coming up in September okay. uh, at Catalyst Fitness here in Atlanta. So, uh, you know, I'm really trying to stay, you know, on top of that and really, you know, I'm going to shift it from the, you know, just want my muscles to be big and look good to more of a movement and how do I move better, how do I stay flexible type game. Very nice. Excellent. That's in September, you said, coming up? Yeah. Awesome. Very, very good. Well, um, let's jump right into the uh, topics today. I've got some notes here. I'm going to just ask you to run through here uh, and okay. get into the heart of the matter. Uh, for the folks watching out there, and let's say they haven't uh, had a personal trainer or hired one, um, you know, and they're watching and they're thinking, you know, maybe it's time I hire a personal trainer. Um, what would be a couple of reasons that you can give or, you know, some good uh, explanations for people out there watching? Like, why should they hire a personal trainer in the first place? Well, the very, very first one, I would say, is definitely accountability. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, most of the people that we come in contact with, you know, they're, you know, they are people and they, you know, treat other people with respect. Mm -hmm. And if you know, uh, okay, I've got somebody somewhere and they're waiting for me. Yep. Uh, most people aren't so callous as to just blow that off and be like, okay, well, whatever. I don't care if somebody's waiting for me. Most people, if for no other reason mm -hmm. than not to be labeled as quote unquote, a, a flake or whatnot, will show up to whatever it might be. It might just yeah. be to you know, eat a bologna sandwich at Piedmont Park, but if you know you're supposed to meet somebody there to eat a bologna sandwich at Piedmont Park, you're going to go there. Sure. Same thing with a personal trainer at the gym. Yeah. If you know there's somebody there waiting for you and they're taking time out of their schedule for you, if for no other reason than guilt, you're going to come and show up. So for people who have, you know, perhaps problems, you know, just, I can just go, if we just go, you sign up with a personal trainer for no other reason. One, you're paying for it. So nobody likes to waste money. And two, you know, nobody likes to be inconsiderate. So you're going to show up for that reason. What, you know, alone right there. Another good reason I would always say is because a lot of times, uh, you know, people, you know, they look at us and, oh, you're in great shape. You probably work out. I get a much better workout when someone trains me, mm -hmm. even though yep. I'm, you know, as a personal trainer, when someone trains me, mm -hmm. as opposed to when I just go into the gym and work out myself. Very it, true. Every time, no, no matter what, uh, I really don't know how to describe it. I mean, you know, I, you know, you think you're doing something where someone else can see that, okay, you got a little bit more, and they can push you over the top, you know, and, you know, it seems like we always want to hold ourselves back from that summit. Almost like we're afraid to hit that. Whereas, you know, a personal trainer or someone else will come and can give you that 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 little boost, that little push that you need. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, and also too, you know, this isn't you know just you know checkered. I mean, we we know that getting in shape when it comes to the you know the exercise portion, the rest portion, the uh, you know the eating portion. You know, it, it's it's not checkered. It's more more of a nuanced game of chess. And mm -hmm. so, certainly, if I was going to try flying an airplane for the first time. Uh, I definitely wouldn't, you know, want to try to get out there and just wing it myself. I would want someone there side by side showing me how it's supposed to be. So same way with training. Uh, most people are unfamiliar with the machines, unfamiliar yeah. with the moves, yeah. what sequence. Uh, so you need somebody there right beside you to fly that plane with you that first time out. Love it. Great analogies there, Brian. Very excellent. Good breakdown there. Um, Let's talk now about some of the, and I know you experience this, this a lot, and uh, again, this is just something I hear a lot from clients, but a lot of times um, their motivation, they're losing you know, motivation, they have just a lack of motivation, and, and they're just not 
um, have the energy level or the focus to get to the gym. And with or without a trainer, let's say that uh, you know they're they're they've got a workout day scheduled and they're just on the fence, thinking, "Gosh, you know what? I don't feel like going to the gym today." And then they say, you know, it just adds up and accumulates. And they tell you, Brian, you know, what do I do? What am I doing wrong? How do I get my motivation back up? What do you tell people and your clients specifically, you know, on how to stay motivated and stay on track? What, is there any magic thing that you can, you know? Uh, I think, you know, just to keep it going. I, I always yeah. tell my guys, you know, I know, you know, there's days that you don't want to come in here, you don't want to work out. Yeah. Uh, just communicate something to me. And the one of my favorite sayings in the whole wide world is slow motion is better better than no motion. Okay, Very true, so yes. maybe you know. All right, today is leg day. We got to come in. We got to kill it. We got to do squats. We got to do lunges. We got to do deadlifts. We got to do you know whatever it might be. And you think, God, I really don't want to do that. I think I'm just gonna skip out. Well, don't skip out. I mean, even if you just come to the gym and just do a couple sets of crunches, uh -huh. slow motion is better than no motion. You know, movement begets more movement. Less movement begets even less movement. So mm -hmm. even if you you know, let's say you know you want to do all this. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you don't have the motivation, if you can just come in and just do a little bit. Yeah. You know, because the worst thing to do is nothing at all. So that's what I always tell them. You know, try to do a little something before you just finally decide to skip out on the gym that day. Uh, even if it's just come in and you do a couple of curls for you know for your biceps, you know something, mm -hmm. you know whatever it be. Slow motion is better than no motion, and every day is different. I mean, you might not have it today, but tomorrow you could you know be slaying giants with it. You know. But don't do anything. Don't stop. Don't quit. Don't ever give up. Sound like Jim Valvano almost. Don't ever give up and do a little something, even on those days where you feel like doing nothing. And, you know, a lot of times that's all it takes to keep the ball rolling, just keeping the ball rolling because that ball stops. Yeah. You know, from physics class, you know, objects that, you know, are in motion tend to stay in motion, ones that aren't tend not to stay in motion. So just keep that ball rolling any way you can. And, you know, it will, you know, one day definitely take back off again. Yeah, yeah, certainly. I, I like that. Uh, that. That's very key. Um, Brian, you know, we mentioned a couple minutes ago the heat. Uh, you know, it's hot. Summers are in the corner, especially in Atlanta. Everybody watching in the greater Atlanta area can attest to this. Um, and they want to, some of the clients we train are outdoor people. Are there any tips or suggestions that you give those people watching on staying cool? Like uh, in this weather, you know, this heat, this 90 degree scorching humidity, uh, what the tips and suggestions do you have for people out there if they're working out outside or if they're going for a walk or run outside? Well, uh, what do you like to tell those people? Well, well first of all, uh, first thing I like to tell them, make sure you stay hydrated. That's mm -hmm. very, very important. Uh, I think a lot of people, uh, we as Americans, we stay chronically underhydrated. I don't know about you, Tarn, but you know, as a kid, they, they told me you need eight, eight ounce glasses yeah. of water a day, yep. 64 ounces. Yeah, there you uh, go. Well, I've read yeah, so much stuff too that goes against that. I've read that you need half your body weight in ounces, yes. plus mm -hmm. any fluids that you leave, that you lose otherwise, ounce for <laughs> ounce. So if you sweat out a pound, you need to drink a full pound to replace that. Mm -hmm. uh, so with me coming in at 220, that's 100, that's double what I was taught as a child. Uh, that's true. To drink. That's so true. First, and for, first and foremost, uh, stay very, very well hydrated. Uh, I normally, you know, you know, steer my clients, you know, clear of, you know, sugary drinks and whatnot, but I, that's probably one of the few times I tell them, if you want some Gatorade, go have you some Gatorade. Yes. You want some Powerade, yes. whatever it might be, Pedialyte, uh, that's fine because you're going to need those electrolytes and replace those. Another thing I tell people is, you know, let's go back to physics class. Let's remember our laws of thermodynamics. Uh, you know, if you're going to go out there in the sun, it's best to wear light colored clothing to reflect that heat. You don't want to wear a bunch of black. You don't want to be dressed up, you know, like Batman, because uh, you know that's going to absorb the heat and make life miserable for you inside those clothes. Also, don't forget your sunblock, your sunscreen, depending on you know how, how well you do as far as with uh, burning and whatnot. And protect your eyes. Uh, you know, wear some shades, uh, maybe a big hat. Uh, but, you know, I tell people, you know, believe it or not, you know, long sleeve white shirt is probably the best thing to go outside if you're going to be working out in the middle of the sun in July. Long sleeve white shirt and like a, you know, maybe a bucket hat or something will give you more protection from the sun than, you know, just about anything. So those two things for sure. Stay hydrated and be aware of what you're wearing, you know, as far as the color of it. I mean, obviously, you're not going to be wearing anything too thick, but uh, definitely the light color clothes make a huge huge difference uh when you're out there and eat and it takes frequent breaks you know mm. don't go out there and try to go you know four straight hours without any break whatsoever take as many breaks as you need you feel yeah. faint nauseated yeah. anyway stop it shut it down go rehydrate maybe come back and try it later you know maybe come back the next day but don't take any chances in this seat oh yeah absolutely yeah. That, that's true 
Um, you know, we've come such a long way uh, with what we learned growing up. You know, you and I are about the same age. And I remember growing up when I did wrestling training practice, uh, water was a big no-no to our coach. He said, oh, you guys don't need that water. And then also, uh, remember the days you'd throw a trash bag over us and make us go running out oh, yeah. in sprints in the heat. Yeah, it was just... that, that's what our coaches <laughs> they took a water break. I mean, you yeah. are a wimp, and you're going to run an extra 10 laps for that. You know, right. it's just, you know, yeah. go, I'm so in the face of reasoning. And, what you know, <laughs> you should have been able to just figure it out that's not cool. And you wonder why half the team is, you know, lying on the ground cramping because they ain't had no water, you know. Hey, we've learned you know, a lot. Yeah, we've come a long yeah. way. <laughs> I had to learn the hard way, though, but we have learned a lot. Yeah, we paid our dues. <laughs> well, also, uh, Brian, uh, getting back to new clients and they sign up, um, and we meet some people, and, you know, um, it, it's very serious when we're signing them up and, and you know, we're holding them by the hand and we're going to tell them that we're going to help them out. And uh, you get, uh, you know, a lot of times I'm sure people ask you, well, uh, how, am I going to lose 50 pounds in the first month, or uh, can I – get this 50% body fat down to 25%? Can I cut, you know, my body fat in half uh, within two weeks, you know, or, or is it safe to lose 10 pounds a week? And I'm sure you hear a lot of things like that, but when you first uh, work with people or your current clients that you continually work with them, what do you foresee as a reasonable expectation level or what would you be happy with in general? I know everyone's different, but what would you be happy with when you tell your clients, well, hey, here's a reasonable goal of what we can attain to lose? Uh, probably a reasonable goal uh, for guys. Uh, I mean, you know, guys. I mean, one, they're a little bit heavier, uh, so obviously have a little bit more weight to uh, lose. But for guys, I'd say anywhere from uh, two uh, up to four and a half, five pounds per week. Mm -hmm. And for my ladies, anywhere from one to about three and a half uh, pounds a week. Yep. Uh, and I try to simplify it for them. Uh, one of the best ways to do that, if you really want to know how much weight you're going to lose, and then you know, one kind of expected to be off. Keep a food journal. Write everything you put in your mouth down. Okay, we take a tally of that. We look at it. Let's say you're at, just to make it easy, you're at 200 pounds, you're eating a 2,000 calorie a day diet. I let them know. Every 500 calories that you cut out of that, you're going to lose a pound a week. I mean, a simple science, every 3,500 calories that you're in a deficit, your body's going to go down a pound. So, if I, you, know, you want to be down a pound a week, take out 500. Nah. If you want to be down two pounds, you can take out 500 and then add in 500 calories being burned extra in exercise. Now you're in a thousand calorie deficit a day, 7,000 at the end of the week, that's two pounds. Mm -hmm. So I really try to show them the puzzle pieces and let them say, all right, now what am I willing to, how far am I willing to go on the nutrition side? How far am I willing to go on the exercise side? Put them both together. And, and it's not always a hundred percent you know, accurate. Yeah. I know rest, stress, a lot of that comes into it sometimes, but for the most part it is and show them, hey, you know, you give me this much cardio and you cut this much out of your diet, this is where you should be on this date right here. So it really, really, I mean, it takes a lot of the guesswork out. It takes a lot of the, you know, you know, you know, things that, you know, just like I don't even know. I worked out really, really hard, but but you went home and you ate, you know, a bunch of bunch of sugar. So all that was almost for not. So really, really get them. I think more than anything else, keep that food journal, uh, so you know what's going in your body. If you keep a food journal, you can determine how much weight you lose, when, you know, the whole nine. But that food journal is very, very paramount if you want to have any idea on time frames on how much weight you're going to lose. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that, Brian. That's very, very good. That is that is key. Uh, nutrition uh, is huge. Um, what about, and again, uh, this gets back to a lot of times where you could relate to me. Uh, you have that client who just is uh, giving you the red light stop sign saying, you know what, I don't have time for the gym. I don't have time to eat right. Just give me the lipo. Uh, I'm going to go and do uh, have liposuction done. Uh, what do you tell those people if they're just like, what's wrong with it? Why can't I just go in and just do it the easy, quick way? Yeah, it costs a lot of money, but why can't I just get some liposuction? What do you say to those folks? I mean, I, I, you know, I tell them you go ahead and you can do that, but if you truly want to be healthier, you know, if you know if you want to live longer, feel better, lipo will make you look better. That's more for the aesthetics you know it's right. more style you want the substance I'm, i don't know about you tyron actually i do know about you you're just like me i like to feel good yeah. you know uh matter of fact uh i would take feeling good over looking good most days of the week yeah so i'll tell them yes that life was gonna make it look better your tummy's gonna be flatter and weight's gonna be smaller whatever but at the end of the day everybody wants to feel good and I've had so many clients tell me, uh, even ones that didn't perhaps lose a lot of weight, maybe they just lost a few pounds, not even lost any weight at all, but they became very, very active. They were once very sedentary, very inactive, and now they're active, 
and they say, you know what, Veronica came to you. I wanted to lose this much weight. I didn't lose that much weight, but you know what? I don't even care anymore. I feel so much better. Uh, and that's something right there that you're not going to get with lipo that you're not going to get with, uh, you know, with anything else other than actually getting out, eating better and exercising. You cannot, I mean, I couldn't, tell you how many people I've seen, well, I wanted to lose 40 pounds, I only lost 20, but I'm okay with losing 20 because, man, I feel like I'm, you know, 20 years old again, you know, and, you know, and they're, they're, they, you know, a lot of times those weight loss goals will be tempered once they realize how much better they feel just by becoming active. Uh, so, yes, you can do the lipo and remain sedentary, and you can look good, but if you want to feel good, then you have to move a little bit. Actually, move a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, what about, I, I think I know the answer to this, but I'll ask it anyway. You're probably uh, in sync with me on this one. But uh, when you have someone tell you, Brian, I'm just too old to get into this and too old to start a program. Uh, what is the uh, age where people are just truly too old to start exercising? And is there an age? Uh, there is no age. I mean, if you're, you know, dead, I mean, I don't see how many <laughs> too old to exercise. But, but there is no age. Uh, our bodies were made to move. Uh, yeah. They were not yeah. made to sit on the couch and click a clicker. They were made to move. So uh, that's one thing I, I noticed about certainly about Eastern cultures is they don't try to put a hard cap on, on you know, as far as exercise and whatnot. You can go over to Beijing and they have, you know, 100-year-olds in the same Tai Chi classes as 20-year-olds, and they're, they're all out practicing and whatnot. So you're never, ever too old, and quite frankly, you're never, ever too young. Uh, I mean, you know, if you ask me, I mean, me and my girls we try to get out and stay, do something active every single day, uh, yeah. no matter what it might be, yeah. swimming, walking, you know, who knows. Uh, so you're never too old, and you're definitely never, ever too young. I like that. I wholeheartedly agree with that. I, I think, uh, yeah, on the flip end, you're right. Uh, that, that's a good point. Uh, I think the earlier that kids start, uh, you know, I, I think that says a lot about not only their parents who are very active, but also that'll uh, set the course and the path for those kids in their life on whether or not they're going to be active too. I, I think that's, that's okay. very, very well stated. You're, you're right. Uh, let's see, Brian, uh, uh, this video blog wouldn't be complete if we didn't say a shout out to uh, one of our mutual uh, favorite clients, Pam. I know she's watching. So, uh, so Pam? Yeah, you know she's watching. Yo, we're back. Walking. Back from your old stomping grounds. Uh, it's still hot <laughs> down there, okay? <laughs> yeah. And the water still takes a bath. <laughs> And, and, you know, uh, I know that she tells you the same thing that she uh, tells me. Um, you know, we're talking about work-life balance. Uh, by the time she gets home, most nights it's 6 p.m. already. Uh, on the flip end, when she sees me, sometimes it's early mornings, it's like 7 a.m. Um, you know, when it gets to, and again, not only Pam, but other people who are watching, um, what's your advice on the best time of day for people to work out it, you know is there is it truly better to work out in the morning or such and then again i guess that goes back and ties into the motivation question i asked you earlier about you know the whole work-life balance oh i work i've got these pets to take care of i've got house to clean up i've got emails to catch up on you know what do you tell um you know the folks out there on how to keep it all together? I have to go with the time shoot for the time that's going to be most convenient for you i'm a huge believer in the more user-friendly things are, yeah. the more likely they're going to happen. And the more user-unfriendly things are, the less likely they're going to happen. Yeah. So if it really works for you to do it in the morning before work, because you know that, you know, let's say you have one of those, open, what I call an open-ended job, that it may say on your job description you work to five, but that could very easily be nine, ten o'clock at night on some days. If you know, if you worry about that, if it's more convenient, then do it in the morning. It, you know, let's say you're not a morning person. I'm not a morning person. I'm not a morning person. Yeah. Well, then do it in the afternoon. So do it when it's going to be the most user friendly time for you and the time that you're most likely to stick to it is what I would say. Uh, you know, it could be you know perhaps you have a little something going on at your job, you got a little gym there, on your lunch break, you can, you know, hey, maybe go and get a quick little 30-minute workout, rinse off, come back to work. Whatever works for that person, whatever is user-friendly for that person, that's what I would shoot for. And, you know, it's going to vary from person to person, but go for the most user-friendly time because that way you're more likely to stick to it. Because if it's going to be, you know, you have to, you know, hang half the stars and the moon in the sky, mm -hmm. then it's very easy for you to drop that uh, very quickly. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. I, I think that's very well stated. And again, you know, I like what you said earlier uh, about accountability. You know, why hire a trainer? Uh, it's all about accountability. That's the primary reason. And uh, your other statement, too, that slow motion is better than no motion. I, I think that's uh, very, very key. I, I, I like that. I, I really uh, 
reiterate those sentiments. So, um, Brian, uh, I, I truly appreciate you coming on here. This time flew by uh, like it did last Thanks, time Matt. with you. Right. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, and I can't wait to have you back on again. Um, so looking forward, Brian, uh, for anybody watching, maybe they didn't catch your last video blog back in April, but uh, how can the folks out there um, get in touch with you? And uh, also, I guess you could tell them you're also at the same gym that I'm at in Buckhead too, but how can the folks uh, get in touch with Brian Gilbert? Uh, easiest way to get a hold of me is just pick up the phone, give me a call. My number is 678-927-0606. Uh, I can also be reached at bhendrixgilbert at yahoo.com. Uh, but like I said, the best way, just hit me on the phone, 678-927-0606. Uh, also, uh, I'm at the Family Life Center five days a week. So, uh, you know, if you ever happen to be in the area over there at the corner of Peachtree and Wesley, uh, stop in, give us a holler, say hello to me and Taryn, but, uh, you know, or give me a call, whichever works for you. Yeah, certainly. And again, I, I give uh, this guy, Brian Gilbert, a uh, definite seal of approval. Uh, this guy is awesome. He will get you in shape. I see you working your clients out like crazy. I don't think I could do the workouts you do to your clients over at <laughs> FLC. I, I'm scared whenever <laughs> you are all over it. You you are a monster. So, uh, But I love it. That's I, I agree with it. Say, say the same thing about you, Tom. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, Brian. Uh, well, Hey, uh, again, thank you so much. Uh, I hope that you enjoy the rest of your summer, and let's have you back on here again to check in to see how your summer is going. No doubt, man, and I'll see you on the battlefield, soldier. Yes, sir. All right, folks, we'll grab a pen and paper because as we fade to black and as I say goodbye, here comes Brian's information, everybody, so uh, check it out. All right, we'll see you, Brian. I right, take care, Tyron. All right, there you have it, folks, the one-on-one -on -one Skype interview here on GoTerran TV with Brian Gilbert, our second time talking to that fine young fitness professional and personal trainer that you can have available right here in the greater Atlanta area. So, Brian, thank you so much for answering the call and coming back on for your follow-up right here for all the GoTerran viewers out there. And I uh, hope you can make it back again very soon as well for yet another follow-up in the near future so everybody out there i know that you're enjoying these wonderful go terran one-on-one interviews via skype right here on go terran tv that i'm going to keep coming and blasting out to you. i'm going to have all these awesome guests and again i've had this compliment before that you can kind of call me like the barbara walters of fitness tv because i'm the one who sits down and talks to all these great people here and gets to the heart of the matter and uh, delves right into everything that there is to talking about when I'm interviewing these great folks. So uh, thanks so much for watching. I uh, really appreciate you being able to check out Brian Gilbert. And again, you saw his contact information there. If you need a personal trainer and a fitness professional to work with, you need to contact him. You had his cell phone number and his email address, so I urge you to get in touch with him today. And tell him that you saw him right here on his interview via GoTerran TV and this website link, www.goTerran.tv. You can also take that link, by the way, and add it to your favorites on your internet browser, bookmark it today, and tell two people about that website as well. A few other things that you could do for me, I would love it if you guys could go out there and like GoTerran on Facebook, subscribe to GoTerran on YouTube, and follow GoTerran on Twitter. And until I see you guys next time, enjoy the rest of this beautiful week that we've got. And wherever you're watching me from, have fun and uh, just enjoy this wonderful June that we are having. And until I see you guys, remember with GoTerran Personal Training, it's your time, it's your investment, it's your life. We'll see you on the next video blog, everybody. So long.